Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. Today we're going to begin with Elon's visit to Starship and we'll look into some of his recent Starship tweets as well. Together we'll cry joyful tears as we gaze upon SpaceX's newly released Crew Dragon animation, check out the heavy launch itinerary for January, and then finish with today's honorable mention. So yes, we have quite a few tweets to go over in today's sode, but we're just going to jump right into it. First off, this week Elon tweeted that he spends 90% of his time at SpaceX working on engineering issues, and he proved it with some video he took while pulling an all-nighter at the Boca Chica site, saying that Starship's tank dome production is the most difficult part for the primary structure, which comes as no real surprise given that that's the part that failed first when pressure tested on the Mark 1 prototype. But fixes and corrections are being implemented for Mark 3's tank bulkheads, of which at least three have been built at the making of this video, with a possible fourth already under construction. Those changes being done for the new Starship prototype include stamped form steel versus manually bumped form steel and tip TIG welded joints versus flux core. Full disclaimer here, I'm no expert on blacksmithing, but here's a quick screenshot of what tip TIG is and how it works. Feel free to pause at this time, but the rest of us are moving on. Elon did follow up, writing that it would be best to use an autogenous laser weld but that is too complex for the time being. And speaking of Autogenus, he confirmed that Starship will not use composite overwrap pressure vessels to pressurize the rocket. Instead, it will be self-pressurized using hot gas from the methane and oxygen running through the Raptor engines. However, COPVs will still be used to spin up the fuel turbines for Raptor ignition. Now enough of those nitty gritty details. Let's clear up an issue concerning Starship's nomenclature. Elon tweeted that SpaceX is now building the flight design of Starship SN1, or serial number one, which isn't really new information, but each one will have at least minor improvements, at least through the 20th Starship or so of version one. After doing a little bit more reading and digging through his tweets, I've come to find that the SN1 Starship is the same thing as Mark III. So those tank bulkheads I showed you a minute ago are for SN1. And Elon is expected to fly SN1 hopefully in two to three months. We all know that's Elon time, even Elon knows that, but hopefully he'll pull it off. His team's already experienced with stainless steel. They got the bulkheads already made. Maybe they're gonna use the top part of the Mark I prototype for the Mark III or SN1. So it's quite possible they do hit that deadline. The next prototype, serial number two, will also be built in Boca Chica in a clean room environment starting this month. I knew transitioning Starship into a cleaner environment was something that SpaceX would have to do eventually, considering even the tiniest debris or dirt floating around in a microgravity environment is not healthy for humans. You don't wanna get that stuff down your orifices. It will mess your physiology up. As expected, the East Coast facilities are still void of any major Starship work. The Coco site has recycling bins full of steel from the cleanup that's been going on over there. Although John Wincomp did say he spotted what appears to be nose cone pieces, as well as sheets of steel being prepped for shipment, maybe to the Roberts Road site or probably Boca Chica. Since once again, Elon confirmed that Boca is focused on Starship and the Cape is focused on Falcon and Dragon. But before we move on to Dragon, check out this mock-up of both the Florida and Texas Starship launch sites someone in the community put together. Bring it on, says I. But okay, let's talk about Crew Dragon now, because a few Dragon bombs were dropped on us this week. And the first one was quite stinky. Once again, Elon tweeted that Crew Dragon should be physically ready and at the Cape for Demo 2 in February. However, completing all safety reviews will probably take a few more months. I know, it's easy to hate on NASA because we know they would be behind these delays, but at the same time, I hear safety is kind of important. So whatever, if it comes to waiting a couple more months, I can stomach that because we got some good news coming our way. First, SpaceX dropped a new animation video for Demo 2 and it is beautiful. I swear, there are parts of it, like this part, when I just can't tell if it's real or fake. I tip my hat to the animator. But you know, it shows liftoff, stage separation, and docking with the International Space Station, as well as re-entry. But by far the coolest thing to see was the deployment of the chutes. That's a cloud-looking dragon right there. Now, concerning upcoming activities, the Cargo Dragon capsule from CRS-19 is currently expected to return from the space station and make a splashdown on Tuesday the 7th after being delayed by weather forecasts. After CRS-20, SpaceX will use a modified version of Crew Dragon for future missions. But before the recovery of Cargo Dragon, SpaceX has Starlink 2 to launch on January 6th. That launch was also pushed because of the forecast. SpaceX wants to catch this particular booster on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You for the fourth time and they will attempt to catch one half of the fairing with Miss Tree and fish the other half out of the ocean with Go Navigator because of the slight damage sustained to Miss Chief's arms. Then on the 11th, we have the in-flight aboard of Crew Dragon, and later in the month, we have two more Starlink missions scheduled. Several launches a month. That's how it's going to be from now on, guys, so buckle up. Before we move on to the honorable mention, 
I would like to offer my congratulations to SpaceX COO Gwen Shotwell for being awarded one of Forbes' top 100 most influential women. And I would also like to congratulate Scott Manley for hitting 1 million subscribers here on YouTube. I had the pleasure of working alongside him a couple months back. He's a good dude, despite his passion for Kerbal Genocide. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. I've wanted to do a Space Force segment for some time now, but I haven't just because there's been more pressing news lately. But I think the time is right. Since just a couple weeks ago on December 20th, President Trump signed America's sixth military branch into law the first in 70 years when the U.S. Air Force was established in 1947. And it was accomplished bipartisanly, or with support from both Republicans and Democrats in Congress. This new branch of the military will organize, train, and equip warfighters focused on space. That doesn't mean they'll be sending soldiers into space. At least not yet. This is it, baby. Hold me. And Space Force's duties include protecting the interests of the United States in space, deterring aggression in, from, and to space, and conducting space operations. Space Force will fall under the Air Force, like the Marines fall under the Navy. And because of this new law, the Air Force Space Command has been renamed the U.S. Space Force, and thousands of military and civilian personnel will be reassigned accordingly. But still, it will take years to fully integrate this new branch into the Pentagon system. The new branch already has a website at spaceforce.mil, so you can visit there and check out all they have to offer, including seven career opportunities. For enlisted personnel, that includes missile and space facilities, space systems operations, missile and space system maintenance, and missile and space systems electronic maintenance. For officers, space operations officer, nuclear and missile operations officer, and munitions and missile maintenance officer. Full disclosure here, I've been a proponent for Space Force since its inception in early 2018, but you know who else is? The SpaceX man himself. Gah, someone tell Darth Elon to chill out. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. A very special thank you to all my eccentric members and patrons who support what I do. If you're interested in doing the same for some extra content and benefits, hit that join button below or check out the link in the description. Y'all have a great weekend and hopefully I'll see you back here on Monday for the Starlink 2 launch. Until that time, Godspeed.